This morning, the title of my message is The Gifts of Grace. And so this particular dimension of grace, of God's grace, I'm going to be talking about probably for the next three weeks. And uh, this is it's quite a comprehensive subject. And it's a different one that we've been talking about uh, the last few weeks about different dimensions of grace. And this one is, is the gift of grace. It's just imagine that God has packaged his grace into a gift. So he is... He has given us uh, gifts of grace. And actually the reason why he's given us these gifts of grace is because of grace. So his motivation is grace and also the gift of grace. So that's why I've titled it The Gifts of Grace. And and today I just want to speak out of one text and it's here in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10. It says this, As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as, gods of, sorry, as good stewards of God's varied grace. Now, I want you to remember for a moment what grace is. And I've talked about it a lot. God's grace is God's unmerited favour, his goodness, his kindness towards humanity. So when you're thinking about gifts of grace, you've got to imagine that it's grace, but it's package grace, like that. It's a gift. God has, has, has packaged his grace into a gift and he's given us this gift. Before I get into the detail uh, on this text, I really want to share part of my story. And when I think about, uh, you know, the gift of God, some gifts that God has given me, you know, I, I have... Have had, I feel quite emotional about it because as I look through my journey, not only with Jesus as a Christian but before I was a Christian, I look back and, and I would say this whole area of, of gifting has been probably one of three or four really emotionally painful parts of my life. When I was... Um, 24, I, I came to faith in Jesus. So before that, I was an atheist. I had quite a rebellious, lived a quite a rebellious life. And, then, and I came to faith, and I've talked about that before. Probably about 18 months after I came to faith, I got filled with the Spirit, if you're familiar with that, that terminology. And when I got filled with the Spirit, I started to get, have a desire, a very prominent desire to serve the Lord to do something for him. And so one of the things I did was uh, as I went to Bible college, or actually they called it ministry training college. So at that time I was working as an accountant. I, I moved from full-time employment to part-time so I could go to Bible college for two years. Well, I initially it was one year and then I decided to do two years. And, and that was because I, I wanted to know more about God. I wanted to, I, I, I had this desire inside me to do something. Do something for him. Now, when I look back, I now see that is one of the gifts that he gave me was a gift of leadership. And so that was the start of sensing a gift of leadership on my life. Uh, but throughout my journey with Jesus, it's been problematic. It's been very, very difficult. Let, let I felt like God had put a gift in me. I'd had moments where people had encouraged it. And other times, I, 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 I had got to a point where, you know, I was just confused. And I felt embarrassed. 
and I felt disappointed. I felt discouraged. Because there, there was something there, but I really wasn't sure what it was, and no one was really helping me with it. But then two amazing things happened. The first was, uh, at that time, I was in my early 40s, and I'd been wrestling with uh, the, my relationship with my father. So my father had passed away in my 20s. We had a very, very difficult relationship. And... I was wrestling through, like, uh, what was that about? Why was my father so angry? Why did he, why did he treat me in the way he did? I, don't, I think I got, I got harsh treatment by him more than my, uh, my siblings. I was wrestling with that because, you know, in my 20s, I was so broken, I didn't even think about that. In my 30s, I was just in denial. Right? I, I just pretended nothing was wrong. I used to hide everything. I was, a, I was just one walking wound, but I just pretended I was fine. But when I got into my 40s, I, I just had to deal with it. And so I started to wrestle with these issues. And, my, and I, so we were obviously still in England. And my brother, who lives here, came and visited one day. He was over in Europe visiting some friends. And he stayed one night at our house in London. And it was right at the time when I was wrestling with this stuff with my father. And so I, he, we were having, after dinner, we were just talking and, and I, I started to fire some questions at him. To, he's about 18 months older than me and I thought, maybe he knows something. So I started to ask some questions about my father with him. Why was he so angry? Why was he, you know, uh, why, why was he deal with me so harshly? Is my memory right? Do you remember him like that? Like, you, I'm just confused, right? Now, he makes this, so he's sort of talking and saying stuff, and then he, can't, he makes this statement which absolutely floored me. He, so, so he's explaining why he thinks maybe my father was like that, and he said, and it's because you're a leader. Now, you've got to know, my brother's a builder. He's never been in at university. He's never done any management course. He doesn't use management language. He, he, you know, he's, he's been, you know, hammering things together all his life. That language is just not part of his vocabulary. He just doesn't use it. So when he said, you're a leader, I was thinking, what? He, he saw you're a leader and he didn't know how to handle it. He didn't know what to do with it. So he just got, it, he just got angry. And it was, like, it was like a word from heaven sp spoke into my heart through, right through all the pain and all the confusion and all the disappointment. It was a word from heaven. The second thing that happened was that as I was growing up, I had, I had one good friend in, in high school. By the time I was 13, we were getting into, uh, I started, we started smoking cigarettes uh, I was stealing porno pornographic magazines and we were looking at those together and, and eventually, in the process of time, I started to smoke marijuana with him. So it was a really significant relationship. <laughs> and, you know, he, I hadn't seen him for 20 years. So, uh, you know, uh, as, you know, early 20s, we drifted apart. We had different groups of friends. And, and so I hadn't been in touch with him since for 20 years. Anyway, I wanted, I always felt bad about not staying in touch. So, so, the, so the previous time I'd, I'd been back to Australia, I tried to track him down, couldn't find him. Contacted his brother who, who worked in Sydney. I get this email, I'm in, in England, I get this email from my friend, Alex. And so he makes contact after 20 years because he, his brother forwarded my email. He's living 20 minutes from where I'm living in London. So I thought he was in Australia. Last time I heard he, was, he did journalism, he was in, living in Singapore. I, I had no idea he was living in London. He'd married a British girl who'd met in Australia and they'd end up living in Richmond, 20 minutes from where we lived. So I met up with him 
And I hadn't seen him for 20 years, so we met up at a restaurant having dinner and we were just talking about our relationship, you know, in schooling. And uh, here's my memory. This guy had a huge influence of, over me. And we were talking about all these things that we used to do. And he said, he said, you know, you, you are the one that influenced me on all of them. I was the one that got the cigarettes. I stole the pornographic magazines. I got my hands on the marijuana. And he goes, yeah, you influenced me with all that. And it was like, what? I don't remember it being me. But he was adamant. And it was like God saying to me, see, I put that gift in you right back then. You just didn't know it. You know, I, you know, it's interesting how God will speak through, if he can't speak through Christians, he will speak through non-Christians. And that's exactly what happened. So even though I, I had all this disappointment that I had to process and, and you know, these difficult situations I'd been through, I felt like God had affirmed me that he'd spoken a word to affirm what he'd put in me through the most unlikely sources. When I talk about God-given gifts, I live knowing the journey that they can... Wrestling with the gifts that God has put in your life can be a difficult journey. It's been a difficult journey for me, and I can guarantee you it will be a difficult journey for some people. I don't know your background... Not all of you. I don't know the journey you've been on. But I know, I've been around it long enough that it's not an easy subject to navigate. Particularly when you feel like God's put something in you. He's given you a gift. But you don't know what to do what with it. And there's no one in your life to help you along the way. That's why I think it's really, really important to talk about this. Let's get back to this scripture. So, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's grace. Let me just look at this first part of it. As each has received a gift. One of the things we need to understand with this gift of grace, each of us has been given one. Notice there, Peter says... Each has received a gift. So you've not only give, been given one by God, you've actually already received it. And get these gifts of grace are not just for some, they're for everyone. Each one of us has been given a gift. Whether we realise it or not, grace gifts are for everyone. You may, you may not realise what that gift is, but you haven't missed out. You have received it. You've received the gift of grace. But notice, it's a personal gift. Each one. I don't know if you grew up in a family that got group gifts. Ever been in a situation where you got a group gift? Oh, you, you've been given a gift, but you need to share it. That's not, that's not like this. God's, God gives us, when he gives us gifts, he gives us to each of us. We don't share it. It's just for us. You know, one of the things that's really interesting about um, gifts, if you think about it, and, and you know, I, I got this as an as a illustration. I, I want, when I say gifts, I want you to think or, or, or think about this image in your mind. Because often when we think about God's grace, it's so vague. It's a gift. It's, it's been packaged as a gift personally for us. Unlike a personal gift that's given to us, that's for ourselves, the gifts that God has given us is for other people. You know, when you think of a gift being given to you, what do you do? Use it for yourself. The 
use the gift for yourself. But in God's kingdom, the gift that God has given you is not for you. It's for other people. Let me th- mention three common responses to God, God's gifts. The first response to God's gift is that we claim that we don't have it or we deny it. So we might see it, but we go, no, 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 he hasn't given me a gift. In my life, God had given me a gift, but my, bro- my brokenness... My wounds covered up the gift. You know, you could use, you know, a thousand watt floodlights and light up the gift in my life. I couldn't see it because there was so much brokenness and wounding in my life. The gift was there, but I couldn't see it. Here's another response, a common response to God's gifts. We reject it, we despise it, or avoid it. Oftentimes... We see someone else's gift and we go, actually, that's the gift I want. Ever done that? I remember at school, high school, I, I played guitar. Uh, two of the subjects I did at high school for my HSC, I, I, was in, I did music and I did art. That best friend that I was talking about, he was an amazing guitarist, played Spanish guitar, flamenco guitar. I used to sit there and watch him. I was awestruck. I started to play guitar, you know, and, uh, and I also started to do art. I, did, I, bo- I failed both in the, hi- in the high school certificate. But, you know, I'd get on my guitar and I'd practice, you know, this, this bar chord, din, 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 din. Practice for hours and hours, got lessons. I was rubbish. I ended up uh, trying to get, I uh, got a group of, oh, I didn't get it together, there's a, some friends of mine who were in a band, I joined their band, you know, tried to play in the guitar, it's just a garage band, we never played live. You know, they saw me play guitar, they handed me the bass. In my time, in the 80s, uh, that was in my teenage years, I, I, part of what I used to do to medicate my pain is I used to listen to music. But what you've got to know about the music in the 80s is that uh, people's voices didn't matter. Right? It was the music, it was the songwriting and, and the melody, it wasn't people's voices. So, you know, I'm, I'm playing some music in the car from my 80s like Dire Straits and Susie's going, man, that guy's got a bad voice. Mark Knopfler does not have a great voice, but he was an amazing songwriter. One of my favourite bands in the 80s was The Jam. The lead singer was Paul Weller. You know, if you listen to his, their first album, 1977, it's called In the City. Well, Paul Weller is just shouting in the mic. In the city, there's a double thing you want to say to you. That's his singing. <laughs> I listen to it now and I go, that's not singing, that's shouting. But then, you don't, don't, no one cared about your voice. So I I thought, I can be a musician. I can be a lead singer in a band, even though I don't have a voice. God had not gifted me with a good voice. You know, but over the years, I realised, actually, I don't have the gift of singing. I don't have the gift of playing guitar. And I just need to let that go. But you know what? I, I was medicating myself on music. That was my fantasy world. And so my fantasy to medicate myself from the pain was to fantasise about being a a rock singer in a band. But it was a fantasy. It wasn't reality. I couldn't sing. I couldn't play guitar. I couldn't write songs. And so oftentimes when we don't know what gift God has given us, we look at someone else's gift and we say, we want their gift. But you know what I discovered? While we're still in fantasy land, wanting someone else's gift, coveting someone else's gift, we leave the gift that God has put in our life dormant. We need to let go of the fantasy. If you you are fantasizing about being a worship leader and God hasn't given you a great voice, let go of the fantasy. 
It might bless you, but it's not going to bless everyone else. I love my singing, but I won't expose other people to it. It will not bless you. So we reject, we deny, we despise the gift God has given us. But here's the other thing we do. We discover the, God, the gift God has given us and we use it for ourselves. God has given me this gift. I'm going to use this gift to serve myself. You know, in this world, the world we live in, mostly God-given gifts become self-serving. They're used for the benefit of moi, of me. If you look at see, see whether you know whether you're a Christian or not, God, God gives people gifts. Some gifts are in there from birth. Other gifts come out when you become a Christian. But you look around at all the talent in the world, and they, whether they're Christian or not, most people when they discover they've got an amazing gift, it's self-serving. They're using it for themselves. They're not using it to serve other people. They're using it to, to make money, to, to benefit themselves, to enhance the well-being of their own life. But God has given us gifts to serve one another. That's why he's given them. Think about this for a moment. They're gifts of grace. What's grace for? Grace comes from God and it's it's for others. It's to benefit other people. God's grace is not for himself. His favour, goodness and kindness is not for himself. It's for us. He provides us grace for us. And when God gives us the gift of grace, he packages his grace, puts the gift in our life. He doesn't give it to, for us, for our benefit. He gives us so we benefit other people. We pick up and use the gift to bless others. So as each of us has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. This word as good stewards, a steward, let me just tell you what, what this word steward means. It means to manage one who rules a house, one who has authority and responsibility for something, one who has charge or direction of something. You know, the most important aspect of stewardship of the gifts God has given us is that we make sure that their use is for the benefit of other people. That, our, that we don't use our gifts to serve ourselves. Why? Because that's the reason God has given it to us. God has given us the power and responsibility to direct the gift and how and we use but, it. You know, so, notice it's we are meant to be not just stewards but good stewards. This word good, it means this. It, it's fit for use. It's beautiful, healthy, sound, the opposite of evil. It is without defects or deformities. So the, the use of our gifts, the, the gifts that God given us, we need to be good stewards and make sure we use these gifts in the right way, that they become a blessing rather than neglecting them, burying them, using it for wrong purposes, you know what we need to do? We need to be faithful. Be faithfully using the gifts God has given us. Let me just, in finishing, talk about this last part. As each of us received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. As I've said, gifts come in many different forms. You can have gifts that came at birth. They came, maybe they came through your family, which is quite common. 
You, you start from a young age being able to do this and that. You know, you, you clearly got a gift that other people don't have. You don't even know God. You, don't, you may even be an atheist, don't believe in God. As I said, other gifts can arise after you become a Christian and the, the, the Holy Spirit starts to work in your life. So the gifts of God are many and varied. But here's uh, what's really important to know. Here's what they're really about. They're gifts of grace. What does the writer mean by that? Well, they're gifts of empowerment. They're gifts of ability. They're gifts of enablement. God gives us supernatural and also natural enablement to do something. Think about it for a moment. God has given you gifts that other people can't do. He's given you abilities, empowerments, enablements, things that you can do that other people can't do. Are you willing to receive that? You need to use that for the benefit of other people. They need that gift. They need you to use that gift because it's God's grace packaged up into a gift and deposited into your life. The world is a better place when we use we become good stewards of the gifts he has put in our life. You know, I know, and, I, and I'm just finishing now, I know that some people here will have, a, have had a difficult time wrestling with this subject. Maybe similar to me, maybe it's more dramatic, maybe it's less dramatic. Maybe you've just confused. Maybe you don't even know what gift God has given you. I feel like as we just close now that we need to allow the Spirit of God to speak to our hearts. Speak to us about the, that, those gift, that gift or gifts that he has placed in our life. That we're meant to act, not only acknowledge, identify and acknowledge, but then we go on a journey to intentionally become good stewards of that gift. Do you know what? I've got a couple of gifts. Just a couple. I can't be all things to everyone. And neither can you. We need each other. But we need each other to be good stewards of the gifts. And we need to be honest with one another. We need, we need to be honest with each other. If, you know, and and that, that means we need to call out the gift when we see it and encourage that gift. Not that we're going to see everything. We've got to speak that out and be bold and say, you know, I think that's a gift. Without having any agenda, but just in sincerity. And we also need to be honest when, when people think they've got gifts that they don't have, like me. Think I'm a guitarist and a singer, when clearly I'm not. And we need to be bold and honest and say, yeah, I, I'm not sure. I think if God wanted you to, to be worship leading, he would have given you a pretty good voice or a reasonable voice and you could stay in tune. But you can't stay in tune and, and no one's blessed by that gift. But we do it, we say that because we want them, that person, to sincerely find the gifts that God has put in their life. So they can find fulfilment and other people can be blessed. So just as we close, let's just close our eyes and, uh, and let's just ask the, the Spirit of God to speak to our hearts.